Easy. All right, guys. Here we are. First Shmuel's Holy Scriptures reading in, in the most natural place on earth, right? Yeah. Where we at? Who knows? Chapter 13? I had the bookmark on it. I got it right here. I'll start. Page, what page is it? 416. Yeah, because uh, we just talked about Abraham talking to Terah. They're about to roll out to Canaan. I'll read first. Chapter right. 13. Jasher, chapter 13 at verse 1. Leave it lit. You ready? And Terah took it. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Hanran and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son. But stop, Liddy. Leave it, Liddy. Okay. Liddy. And Terah and Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Hanran and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son Abram, and all the souls of his household, and went with them from Ur, cast them to go to the land of Canaan. And when they came as far as the land of Haran, they remained there. For it was exceedingly good land for pasture, and of sufficient extent for those who accompanied them. And the people of the land of Pan, I think it's Haran. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with God and men. And that the Lord his God was with him. And some other people of the land of Haran came and joined Abram. And he taught them the instructions of the Lord and his ways. And these men remained with Abram in the house, and they adhered to him. And Abram remained in the land three years. And at the expiration of three years, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee forth from ur Kasdim, and delivered thee from the hands of all thine enemies. And now, therefore, if thou wilt hearken to my voice and keep my commandments, my statutes and laws, then will I cause thine enemies to fall before thee, and I will multiply thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will send my blessings upon all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lack nothing. Arise now, take thy wife and all belonging to thee, and go to the land of Canaan, and remain there, and I will, and I will there be unto thee for a God, and I will bless thee. And Abram rose and took his wife and all belonged to him, and he went to the land of Canaan, as the Lord had told him. And Abram was 75 years old when he went from Haran. And Abram came to the land of Canaan and dwelt in the midst of the city. And he there pitched his tent amongst the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram, and he came to the land of Canaan and said to him, this is the land which I will give thee and to thy seed. Which I gave thee. This is the land which I gave unto thee and to thy seed after there, after thee forever. And I will make thy seed like the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thee seed for an inheritance all the lands which thou seest. And Abram went, and Abram built an altar in the place where God had spoken to him. And Abram them called unto the name of the Lord. At that time, at the end of three years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, in the year, in that year Noah died, which was the fifty-eighth year of the life of Abram. Fifty-eighth year of the life of Abram, and all the days that Noah lived were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, he, his wife, and all belonging to him, and all those and all those that accompanied him, together with those that joined him from the people of the land. But Hadnhor, Abram's brother, and Terah, his father, and Lot, the son of Haran, and all belonging to them, dwelt in Haran. 
and in the fiftieth, and in the fifth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and all the cities of the plain revoked from the power of she Shidramalar, she king of Elam. For the kings of the cities of the plain had served. Yeah, Shador, Shador Lamer, Lamer. Shador Lamer yeah. for 12 years and given him a yearly tax. But in those days, in the 13th year, they rebelled against him. And in the ninth and in the 10th year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, there was war between Nimrod, king of Shadar and Shadolamara, Shadolamar, king of Elam, and Nimrod came to fight with Shadolamar and to subdue him. For Shadolamar was at the time one of the princes of the host of Nimrod. When all the people at the tower were dispersed, and those that remained were also scattered upon the face of the earth. Shadolomir went to the land of Elam and reigned over it and rebelled against his Lord. And in those days when Nimrod saw that the cities of the plain had rebelled, he came with pride and anger to war with Shadolomir. And Nimrod assembled all his princes and subjects, about 700,000 men, and went against Shadolomer. And Shadolomer went out to meet him with 5,000 men. And they prepared for battle in the valley of Babel, which is between Elam and Shinar. And all those kings fought there, and Nimrod and his people were smitten before the people of Shadolomir. And there fell Nimrod's men, about 600,000. And Mardon, the king's son, fell amongst them. And Nimrod fled and returned in shame and disgrace to his land. And he was, and he was under just, and he was under subjection to Shadolomer for a long time. And Shadolomer returned to his land and sent princes of his host to the kings that dwelt around him. To Arnok, king of Elar, Ezar, and to the title and to the title king of Golem, Golem and made a covenant with them. And they were all obedient to his command. And it was in the 15th year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the 70th year of the life of Abram. And the Lord appeared to Abram in that year. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee out from Ur, Kism, to give thee this land for an inheritance. Now therefore walk before me and be perfect and keep my commands. For to thee and to thy seed I will give this land for an inheritance. From the river Mitzirim unto the great river Euphrates. And thou shalt come to thy fathers in peace and in good age. And the fourth generation shall return here in this land and shall inherit it forever. And Abram built an altar. He called upon the name of the Lord who appeared to him. He brought up sacrifices upon the altar to the Lord. At that time, Abram returned and went to Haran to see his father and mother and his father's household. And Abram and his wife and all belonging to him returned to Haran. And Abram dwelt in Haran five years. And many of the people of Haran, about 72 men, followed Abram. And Abram taught them the instructions of the Lord in his ways. And he taught them to know the Lord. In those days, the Lord appeared to Abram in Haran, and he said to, the, to him, Behold, I spoke unto thee these twenty years back, saying, Go forth from thy land, 
from thy birthplace and from thy father's house to the land which I have shown thee to give it to thee and to thy children. For there in that land will I bless thee and make thee a great nation and make thy name great. And in all thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Now therefore arise, go forth from this place. Though thy wife and all belonging to thee, also every one born in thy house and all the souls that has made has made in Haran and bring them out with thee from here and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And Abram arose and took his wife Sarai and all belonging to him and all that were born to him in his house and the souls which they had in Haran and they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And Abram went and returned to the land of Canaan according to the word of the Lord. And Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he went forth from Haran to return to the land of Canaan. And he came to the land of Canaan according to the word of the Lord to Abram. And he pitched his tent and he dwelt in the plain of Maram, Mary, with him, with him, with him was Lot, his brother's son, and all belonging to him. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to thy seed, I will give this land. And he there built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him, which is still to this day in the plains of Merim, Mary. Still just a touch over. All right, let me go ahead. Yeah. Chapter 14. In those days there was in the land of Shinar a wise man who had understanding and all wisdom, and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indignant, and his name was Rikaon, and he was hard set to support himself, and he resolved to go to Egypt to Oswiris, the son of Anam, king of Egypt, to show the king his wisdom, for perhaps he might find grace in his sight to raise him up and give him maintenance. And Rikayon did so. And when Rikayon came to Egypt, he asked the inhabitants of Egypt concerning the king. And the inhabitants of Egypt told him the custom of the king, for it was then the custom of the king of Egypt that he went from his royal palace and was seen abroad only one day in the year. And after that, the king would return to his palace to remain there. And on the day when the king went forth, he passed judgment in the land. Everyone having a suit came before the king that day to obtain his request. And when Rukayan heard the custom, heard of the custom of Egypt, wait, when Rukayan heard of the custom of Egypt, and that he could not come into the presence of the king, he was grieved greatly and was very sorrowful. And in the evening, Rikayan went out and found a, hort, a house in ruins formerly a bakehouse in Egypt. And he abode there all night in bitterness of soul and pinched with hunger, and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rikayon considered within himself what he should do in the town until the king made his appearance, and how he might maintain himself there. And he rose in the morning and walked about and met in his way those who sold vegetables and various sorts of seed with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rikayon wished to do the, the same in order to get a maintenance in the city. But he was unacquainted with the custom of the people, and he was like a blind man among them. And he went and obtained vegetables to sell them for his support. And the rabble assembled about him and ridiculed him and took his vegetables from him and left him nothing. And he rose up from there in bitterness of soul, and he went sighing to the bakehouse in which he had remained all the night before. And he slept there the, the second night. And on that night again, he reasoned with himself how he could leave it lit, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Sit down. He rose in the morning and and on that night, he, again, he reasoned with himself how he could save himself from starvation. And he devised a scheme how to act. He, he rose up in the morning and acted ingeniously 
and went and hired thirty strong men of the rabble, carrying their war instruments in their hands. And he led them to the top of the Egyptian sepulchre, and he placed them there. And he commanded them, saying, Thus saith the king, Strengthen yourselves and be valiant men, and let no man be buried here until two hundred pieces of silver be given, and then he may be buried. And those men did according to the order of Rikion to the people of Egypt that the whole year. And in eight months' time, Rikion and his men gathered great riches of silver and gold. And Rikion took a great quantity of horses and other animals, and he hired more men. He gave them horses, and, he, and they remained with him. And when the year came round at the time, when the year came round at the time the king went forth into the town, all the inhabitants of Egypt assembled together to speak to him concerning the work of Rikion and his men. And the king went forth on the appointed day, and all the Egyptians came before him and cried unto him, saying, May the king live forever. What is this thing that what is this what is this thing thou doest in the town to thy servants? not to suffer a dead body to be buried until so much silver and gold be given. Give was there ever like was there ever the like unto this done in the whole earth? From the days of former kings, yea, even from the days of Adam unto this day, that the dead should not be buried only for a set price. We know it to be the custom of the kings to take a yearly tax from the living, but thou doest not only that but thou doest not only do this but from the dead also thy exactest a tax day by day now O king we can no more bear this for the whole city is ruined on this account and doest thou not know it and when the king heard all that they had spoken he was very wroth and his anger burned within him at this affair for he had known nothing of it and the king said who and where is he that dares to do this wicked thing in my land without my command? Surely you will tell me. And they told him all the works of Rikion and his men. And the king's anger was aroused. And he ordered Rikion and his men to be brought before him. And Rikion took about a thousand children, sons and daughters, and clothed them in silk and embroidery. And he sent them upon horses and sent them to the king by means of his men. And he also took a great great quantity of silver and gold and precious stones and a strong and a strong and beautiful horse as a present for the king which he came before the king and bowed down to the earth before him and the king his servants and all the inhabitants of Egypt wondered at the work of Rikion and they saw his riches and the present that he had brought to the king and it greatly pleased the king and he wondered at it and when the Rikion sat before the king, sat before him, the king asked him concerning all his works. And Rikion spoke all his words wisely before the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt. And when the king heard the words of Rikion and his wisdom, Rikion found grace in his sight, and he met with his grace and kindness from all the servants of the king and from all the inhabitants of Egypt on account of his wisdom and excellent speeches. And from that time they loved him exceedingly. And the king answered and said to Rikion, Thy name shall no more be called Rikion, but Pharaoh shall be thy name, since thou didst exact a tax from the dead. And he called his name Pharaoh. And the king and his subjects loved Rikion for his, all, for his wisdom, and they consulted with all the inhabitants of Egypt to make him prefect under the king. And all the inhabitants of Egypt and its wise men did so, and it was made a law in Egypt. And they made Rikion Pharaoh prefect under Osiris. Hey, perfect. No, prefect. And they made Rikion Pharaoh prefect under Osiris, Osiris, king of Egypt. And Rikion Pharaoh governed over Egypt, daily administering justice to the whole city. But Osiris, the king, would one would judge the people of the land one day in the year when he went out to make his appearance. And Rikion Pharaoh cunningly usurped the government of Egypt and he exacted a tax from all the inhabitants of Egypt. 
And all the inhabitants of Egypt greatly loved Rekai on Pharaoh, and they made a decree to call every king that should reign over them and their seed in Egypt Pharaoh. Therefore all the kings that reigned in Egypt all the kings that reigned in Egypt from that time forward were called Pharaoh unto this day. Right, chapter 15 And in that year there was a heavy famine throughout the land of Canaan and the inhabitants of the land could not remain on account of the famine, for it was very grievous. And Abram and all the belongings to him rose and went down to Egypt on the account of the famine. And when they were at the brook Mitzrayim, they remained there some time to rest from the fatigue of the road. And Abram and Sarai were walking at the border of the brook Mitzrayim, and Abram beheld his wife Sarai, that she was very beautiful. And Abram said to his wife Sarai, Since God has created thee with such beautiful countenance, I am afraid of the Egyptians, lest they should slay me and take thee away. For the fear of God is not in these places. Surely then thou shalt do this. See, thou art my sister to, to all that may ask thee order that I may be well with me and that we may live and not be put to death. And Abram commanded the same to those that came with him to Egypt on account of the famine. Also his nephew Lot he commanded saying, if the Egyptians ask thee concerning Sarai, say she is the sister of Abram. And yet with all of these orders, Abram did not put confidence in them, but he took Sarai and placed her in a chest and concealed it amongst their vessels. For Abram was greatly concerned about Sarai on account of the wickedness of the Egyptians. And Abram and all belongings to him rose up from the brook Mitzrayim and came to Egypt. And they had scarcely entered the gates of the city when the guards stood up to them saying, Give to thee to the king from what you have, and then you may come into the town. And Abram and those that were with him did so. And Abram with the people that were with him came to Egypt, and when they came, they brought the chest in which Sarai was concealed, and the Egyptians saw the chest. The king's servants approached Abram, saying, What hast thou here in this chest? which we have not seen. Now open thy chest and give to this to the king of all that it contains. And Abram said, This chest I will not open, but all you demand upon it I will give. And Pharaoh's officers answered Abram, saying, It is a chest of precious stones. Give us the tenth thereof. And Abram said, All that you desire I will give, but you must not open the chest. And the king's officers pressed Abram, and they reached the chest and opened it with force. And they saw, and behold, a beautiful woman was in the chest. And when the officers of the king beheld Sarai, they were struck of admiration at her beauty. And all the princes and servants of Pharaoh assembled to see Sarai, for she was very beautiful. And the king's officers ran and told Pharaoh all that they had seen. And they praised Sarai to the king, and Pharaoh ordered her to be brought. And the woman came before the king. And Pharaoh beheld Sarai, and she pleased him exceedingly, and he was struck with her beauty. And the king rejoiced greatly on her account, and made presents to those who brought him the tidings concerning her. And the woman was then brought to Pharaoh's house, and Abram grieved on account of his wife, and he prayed to the Lord to deliver her from the hands of Pharaoh. And Sarai also prayed at that time and said, O Lord God, thou didst tell my Lord Abram to go from his land and from his father's house to the land of Canaan, and thou didst promise to do well with him if he would perform thy commandments. Now behold, we have done that which thou didst command us. And we left our land and our families, and we went to the strange land, to a people whom we have not known before. 
We came to this land to avoid famine, and this evil accident has befallen me. Now therefore, O Lord God, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor. Do well with me for the sake of thy mercy. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And the Lord sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. And the king came and sat before Sarai. And behold, an angel of the Lord was standing over them. And the king, and he appeared to Sarai and said to her, Do not fear, for the Lord has heard thy prayer. And the king approached Sarai and said to her, What is that man to thee who brought thee hither? She said, He is my brother. And the king said, It is uncomfortable upon us to make him great, to elevate him, and to do unto him all the good which thou shalt command us. And at that time, the king said, Abram, silver and gold, and precious stones in abundance, together with cattle, men servants, and maid servants. And the king ordered Abram to be brought, and he sat in the court of the king's house. And the king greatly exalted Abram on that night. And the king approached to speak to Sarai, and he reached out his hand to touch her. When the angels smote him heavily, and he was terrified, and he refrained from reaching to her. And when the king came near to Sarai, the angels smote him to the ground and acted thus to him the whole night. And the king was terrified. And the angel on the night smote heavily all the servants of the king and his house and his whole household on account of Sarai. And there was a great lamentation that night amongst the people of Pharaoh's house. And Pharaoh, seeing the evil that befell him, said, Surely on the account of this woman has this thing happened to me. And he removed himself at some distance from her and spoke pleasing words to her. And king said to Sarai, Tell me, I pray thee, concerning the man whom thou camest here. And Sarai said, This man is my husband. And I said to thee that he was my brother, for I was afraid. Least thou shouldest put him to death through wickedness. And the king kept away from Sarai. When the plagues of the angel of the Lord ceased from him and his household, and Pharaoh knew that he was smitten on account of Sarai, and the king was greatly astonished at this. And in the morning of the king, and in the morning the king called for Abram and said to him, "What is thou has done to me? Why didn't thou say she was, she is my sister, owing to which I took her <coughs> unto me for a wife? And this heavily, and this heavy plague has therefore come upon me in my household. Now therefore, here is thy wife. Take her and go from our land, <coughs> lest right. we all die on her account." And Pharaoh took more cattle, men, servants, and maid servants, and silver and gold to give Abram, and he returned unto Sarai his wife. The king and the king took the maiden whom he begot by his combines, and he gave her to Sarai for a handmaid. And the king said to his daughter, It is better for thee, my daughter, to be handmaid and this man's house and to be a mistress in my house after we befell the evil that after we beheld the evil that befell us on account of this woman and abram's arose and abram arose and he said and he and all belongings to him went away from egypt and pharaoh ordered some of his men to accompany him and all that went with him and Abram returned to the land of Canaan, to the place where he had made the altar, where he had, where he at first had pitched his tent. And Lot, the son of Haran, Abram's brother, had a heavy stock of cattle, flocks, and herds, and tents. For the Lord was bountiful to them on account of Abram. And when Abram was dwelling in the land of the herdsmen of Lot, quarreled with the herdsmen of Abram, for their property was too great for them to remain together in the land, 
the land could not bear them on account of their cattle. <coughs> bless you. Excuse me. God bless you. And when Abram's herdsmen went to feed their flock, they would not go into the field of the people of the land, but the cattle of Lot's herdsmen did otherwise, for they were suffered to feed in the fields of the people of the land. And the people of the land saw this occurrence daily, and they came to Abram and quarreled with him on account of Lot's herdsmen. And Abram said to Lot, What is this thou art doing to me to make me despicable to the inhabitants of the land? That thou orderest thy herdsmen to feed thy cattle in the fields of other people? Dost thou not know I am a stranger in this land amongst the children of Canaan? And why wilt thou do this unto me? And Abram quar quarreled daily with Lot on account of this. But Lot would not listen to Abram, and he continued to do the same. And then having of the land came and told Abram, and Abram said unto Lot, How long wilt thou be to me for a stumbling block with the inhabitants of the land? Now I beseech thee, let there be no more quarreling between us, for we are kinsmen. But I pray thee, separate from me, go and choose a place where thou mayest dwell with thy cattle and all belongings to thee. But keep thyself at a distance from me, thou in thy household, and be not afraid in going from me, for if any one do any injury to thee, let me know, and I will avenge thee cause for him, and I'll avenge thy cause for him from him, only remove from me. And when Abram had spoken all these words to Lot, then Lot arose and lifted up his eyes towards the plain of Jordan. And he saw that the whole, and he saw that the whole of this place was well watered and good for man, as well as affording pasture for the cattle. And Lot went to Abram, went from Abram to that place, and he pitched his tent there. And he dwelt in Sodom, and they were separated from each other. And Abram dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and he pitched his tent there. And Abram remained in that. place place many years great okay, that's good right there yeah it is good this was our first podcast at this new location we had some fine tuning to do especially with the dog here she was like having a good time being a dog we just have to fine tune it but i i, I had a good time yeah it was nice out here yeah it is nice out here and i and to recap what we read who's this guy uh rikayon rikayon no, is he right. the devil I don't really know. He come bringing a new way. Yeah, and he became you know? a pharaoh. Yeah, he and, and every pharaoh in the world is named that man. We have to let's do some research on him so we'll come back next time we can talk about it. Yeah, if you guys got any questions, let us know in the comments. Uh, if you have ever heard of that, if you're in Egypt and that was a story you were told as a, as a kid, give us some insight on it. Yeah, that I like to be like a bedtime, you know. That's true. It could be like an Egyptian. I love to hear that telltale story. Yeah. Uh, so let us know. And uh, don't forget, uh, if you want to pick up your copy of the Holy Scriptures, go to truthofgod.com. Link will be in the description of the video of where to buy it. Thanks, every, everybody, for bearing with us and being with us today. Yeah, thanks for, for tuning in. Uh, so what, what chapters did we read? We read from chapter 13 to 16? Yeah. Today we read Joshua chapter 13 to 16, guys. So we'll pick up on chapter 17 next week. I have to remember. Yeah. Right, let's get out of here. Thanks, guys. Hey. Tune in. Let's make sure it was recording. Man.